Well, welcome to our very first Cultivate podcast for East Coast women in the garden, which yeah. is amazing. Uh, I have Emma Andrew with me this morning. And you may or may not know, but Emma is in charge of our women's ministry at East Coast, which really birthed last 12 months. Mm. Um, what we've been doing is women's worship nights and then a highlight obviously was Encounter yeah. last year, uh, an incredible day. And I would say I hallmark your ministry with exceeding my expectations on every front. It's like, oh, we're going to do a garden. Okay. <laughs> and then I walk in and it's always exceeded my mm. expectations. You have this amazing ability to find people in their gifting and just release them in that. And that's just been amazing. I love you. She works for, can I say who you work for? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Well, we're um, high capacity women. Um, and we wanted to just talk about the journey we went on really when COVID hit. Mm. I know the first conversation we had as soon as gatherings of 100 and they were talking this could go on for six months, yeah. we were like encounter. Talk to me about how you felt. Yeah, for sure. I think it was a huge thing to go, okay, we're going to have to make a decision at some point. And I know as Christians, we're always like, oh, you know, God will bring us together in, say, six months' time when in August, you know, we'll be able to meet together and really just have faith for that. But I think what we had to do is say, you know what, we're going to call it and know that God's going to do something amazing in this time, it didn't surprise him that we would yeah. be here doing this. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it was a huge shift from our perspective to go, oh, we actually have to be creative now. And it's amazing that we have such a good team that is creative because I know myself, I'm like, I don't think of myself as the most creative person, um, but it's really had us to think outside the box and go, you know what, God's really stretching us at this point. What yeah. are we going to do? How are we going to embrace it? And I think that's when this series came to pass. And I think it's going to be amazing, the fact that we've even been able to do this. Yeah, and engaging with guests that we wouldn't have, yeah. you know, just with the One Day Encounter, doing a series of podcasts for women, yeah. being able to bring in different voices, um, yeah, is exciting. And even I just remember we went for a walk. Um, <laughs> Probably like the longest walk that was ever. <laughs> yeah, even my dog was tired. Um, <laughs> And talking about cultivate and not leaving that word that was over mm. 2020 for the year after, but yeah. we felt that it was the word for this year, for the women, and even knowing and on all of our um, promo, just the, the description of cultivate to bestow attention, to put mm. extra effort and focus on something to produce um, a result uh, and when I think about the season of isolation, it, it's a stripping back. Yeah. And though both of us are not gardeners. Um, <laughs> I we, married one, but I'm definitely not one myself. <laughs> <laughs> what I know from just really understanding the imagery that God often speaks to us about mm. a garden is just when we think about cultivating, it's about like turning the soil you know, removing the rocks, removing the things that are going to prevent growth. And then when we think of planting seeds, it's such a slow process. I yeah. think that's why I don't like gardening in the natural because it's tedious. It's slow. You put in all this effort and then you have to wait. But yeah. the truth is from our spiritual lives, when we invest um, in areas that it'll be a slow growth, but we know that that focus will produce fruit. Mm. later on yeah definitely and I think it was actually funny during um the start of COVID when all the panic buying kind of happened mm. um Jerome my husband and I went to Bunnings and we were like you know what let's plant some seeds let's get some carrots and veggies and things like that not even in relation to COVID but when we walked into Bunnings all like all the fertilizer disappeared yeah. all the seeds like everything and you know we managed to get a few things but I was <laughs> I'm I am the worst gardener in that context in the sense of having to water every day. Yeah. Let's just say that these things have not flourished and I do not have any veggies. Um, but God reminded me so much that it's a process. Yeah. That when we go with effort and we actually put our focus and attention towards something, then that's when we'll flourish. And in every season, what we plant 
we'll be able to harvest in the next. Yes. And just that whole process of whatever we walk through, that goodness can come from it. And I think particularly in this time of, you know, stripping back, I think a lot of us um, as women, it's almost like we identify ourselves with the roles we play. Yeah. And so when those roles are taken out or those roles change, you're like, oh, what do I do? And, you know, so often we're edified from each other, which I think is Mm. a beautiful thing. But at this moment, it's like we've really had to find God for ourselves, Yeah. And we've really had to find what he says about us for ourselves, and not just wait to be edified from each other. And I think it's really beautiful of what God is doing in this season. Um, despite all the devastation that's going on, he's bringing goodness to it and he's bringing fruitfulness. And I think it's, you know, it's amazing to think that God knew this would happen. And God knew that, like he gave us the word of cultivate last mm. year. And that he knew it would look like this in this season, that even though our plans had to change, it doesn't mean he changes. And I think it's really encouraging to know that he will still bring around a harvest. That's right. And actually in in what he intends, because he, Mm, yeah, exactly. He's never taken by surprise and we often think it looks one way. Uh, but he can produce that fruit in a completely different way, in a way we couldn't have expected. And our key scripture, like Galatians 5, the fruits of the spirit, and we've got the passion translation, which we love, just the way it embellishes it, you know, joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, and a gentleness of heart and strength of spirit. And... I think about patience and when I first went into the season of working from home with the kids and I thought, okay, well, we're we're doing this theme of cultivate and we're wanting to grow in the fruits of the spirit. God, I know I have this patience in my life, but how do I cultivate it? How do Mm. I grow it more? How do I put attention in it so I can have patience that endures and joy that overflows and even kindness in action? I saw all of those fruits be challenged and have the opportunity to grow as well in that intense time. Yeah. And I love when it talks about endurance Mm. because so often I think we go, God, like I really want patience or I really want joy. Yet to have enduring joy and enduring patience, you need to walk through seasons that potentially we weren't ready to face in the sense of our expectation. Um, (laughs) But I think, you know, in walking through like even even this season at the moment where people, you know, there's so much unknown around and I think it's so important that we recognise that God is going to move despite the unknown and even when we think about it and go, okay, this is how I see it coming to happen, God can just go, no, like this is, I've got better for you, I've got more for you and it's so important to be able to, know that what we ask of God, he will deliver, even if it's not how we think it'll happen. Yeah, absolutely. And Emma and I have been discussing before that we're quite different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Personality. In a good way. In a good way. Because yeah. we are all different. Yeah, and I think definitely. that is the, yeah, we don't need to change. We embrace, mm. um, well, at times we need to change. That's a sweeping statement that's wrong. Well. <laughs> um, But just knowing your personality and one of your greatest strengths is being so organised and especially when it comes to encounter like a major event, you know, with hundreds of women and nearly hundreds of volunteers as Mm -hmm. well, the preparation and planning, and that's a strength of your personality and temperament. But then when it comes to being in seasons of uncertainty. And that's what I've even found, not being someone who needs that high level, you know, Mm -hmm. of I'm organised because I have to be. My life would fall apart. But even in this season I've found we can't plan really more than two or three weeks ahead. Yeah. Um, how, how have you coped with being forced to trust God probably at a greater level, like, you know, letting mm. go of that planning and that control in your personal life as well as like on a ministry level? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think it's a huge thing of what I've been challenged through in this season. I think God made me a thinker, um, very much a planner, an organiser, and it's great for my work. Like it yeah. helps me flourish in that aspect. And But when it comes to God, it's something that I've battled with quite a lot. And I think 
you know, so often like I look at God and I'm like, yes, I know the promise and the plan that like that he has for me, but I look at it as if it's a future thing and I go, Mm. okay, I'll take that promise and then I'll plan the steps. And I think for me, what God's brought me back to in this season is being being able to rest in him and work from a place of rest in knowing that he will guide my steps as well as give me the promise to fulfill yeah. it. And I think, you know, at the moment, my husband and I are building a house and, you know, God's just been faithful in every step, but still sometimes you're like, oh, do I make this huge move that has yeah. financial implications for our family? And, you know, sometimes we just have to trust God and we're having a conversation with our friend the other day and they're no longer in charge. But what they said to us is that I missed the hope. Yeah. I miss in, I miss being able to, you know, make a decision knowing that God is with me. Yeah. And I think it's so amazing and I think sometimes we take it for granted what we have that hope and that peace that, you know, as we make decisions and as we sow seeds that God gives us peace. Yeah, totally. I think it's something we become so accustomed to, the peace of God Mm. that we don't realise that everyone else is living with that. And just I've watched Christians and experienced it in my own life go through, you know, great trials and Mm. trauma and the scripture where it says like this hope is an anchor for our soul and it goes down deep, you know, and holds on and can weather any storm and that is the truth of our hope in Jesus and we underestimate the power of that hope and mm. peace in our lives. And we, I think we overcomplicate sometimes even how God works through us and realising if I just, yeah, cultivate, put attention on growing that yeah. peace, you know, that hope, when I put that attention on it, people can smell it's probably the wrong word, but they, you know, there is a scripture about, <laughs> about us fragrance. having a fragrance. Yeah. Um, but all that our lives are like a letter. Mm. It's like I, you know, and people read it on us that, that hope mm. and that peace in God and that they have access to it too. And so as, as women, um, whatever season we're in that those things that we do carry as believers are very powerful. Yeah, really definitely. Powerful. I think particularly now when, you know, I work in a big corporate business yeah. that you don't think much can shake it. And then suddenly you've got this disease, infection that no one can see and it throws everything. And you think about Woolworths like at the heart of that, yeah. like when everything hit and the panic buying and just the stress you guys would have been under in that yeah. season, just having to fully restructure and put things mm. in place and even having uh, aggression breaking out in shop mm. fronts, I can imagine for your company would have been quite stressful. Yeah. And realising that you're putting your position for such a time as this as well um, and that God had called you there to yeah. build and be like a, a strong stable, you know, point even for your colleagues as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, so much came out of this season in the sense of just people realising that we may not have it all together. Yeah, You know, we don't know the beginning and the end. There's so much that we can control, but there's a lot that we can't. And I think that's a realisation that's come through this whole, um, process not only just at work but I think within relationships with friendships Mm. is that there's so much that we can do but there's so much more that God can yeah and if you think about foundations we've got Jesus talks about you know the rock building Mm. our lives on the rock which is him and then um, there's an old song like all other ground is sinking sand do you remember that (laughs) classic um But I feel that's what COVID has done is you think that what you've built your life on Mm. is stable until you realise, no, everything other than Christ um, and our hope in God can be taken away and in an instant and how quickly. And I think that's why engagement with online church when everything hit was really high because people realised they Mm. needed that hope. And then it's like life's starting to go back to normal and people think, okay, now I can put my trust back in, you know, my job and my things. And, um, but my hope is and heart is that there's been that reconnected likeness for people with God in this season and people's hearts have opened back to him as well. And I guess just in closing this morning, 
I wanted to highlight Emma really because God gave you a burden for the women that was like God birthed. And I even Mm. just, and I tell this story often because I think it's going to be like a unique part of our story. I remember when you came to me and it was the first year we transitioned and I was like, oh, like, okay, God, if you've given Emma this burden, like, should I have this? Like, I was just amazed that you just carried this. And then as soon Mm. as I went to God with it, he just affirmed that this, you've been called to do this. And when I just released you in it, I've just never mm-hmm. seen anyone flourish more. But then what's even more confirming by that ministry is people flourishing under you. And what's so incredibly beautiful about the way you love the women is that it's generational. And so though you're a young woman, you know, in leadership and you could think that uh, you focus on the young, but if anyone knows you and knows your heart Mm. is you focus on all women of all generations and you've actually brought in women almost out of hiding within church and given them roles and I've seen women flourish like in leadership roles and can you talk a little bit about your heart for the women moving forward, like even beyond this year into the years to come. Yeah, and I think it's so important to know that God sees everyone, Yeah, not just the women but the men alike. And yeah. I think it's important that we know the role that we play and I think so often we can get caught up with either going, oh, they're good at doing this or, you know, they're good at being up the front and we just kind of step back. And I knew, I know I used to do that myself as well. Um, And you can always justify someone else doing Mm. a better role, but I think there's a role that God's called us all to play. Um, And I think it's so important to recognize that and for that to flourish, that we're not meant to be hidden away, Yeah, but we are God's light and his lamp. And we need to make sure that what we put our hand to, that God is in it. And I think Mm. that's so important as part of the women's ministry. You know, I always say to the women that whatever we do, we prepare the way for God. Yeah. And even if it goes disastrously wrong, as long as our hearts are right to prepare the way for Mm. God, God is the one who's going to do the healing, the miracles, you know, mend broken hearts. And I think that's so important that our main focus is that. But I love the fact that God uses all of us. And yeah. it's, it is a generational thing. We all play a role within the body of Christ. We're not separate from it. No. We're together as one yeah. and God intended that. And I think for the women's ministry and what God's really been showing me is that it's not just events. Like it, it's never yes, events. Never. Yeah. Um, and there's so much more that God wants to do going forward as, as he connects the women. And I think it's so, a lot of us are very relational. Um, a lot of us, I'm definitely not an extrovert <laughs> at all, um, but I think you know what Emma's, extro- Emma's calling for isolation to come back. To bring back isolation. <laughs> at some point, let I me was. just be selective. Two people, yes, yeah. <laughs> seriously, it, it does get some uh, working on, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I think you know we all play a role. Our extroverts, our introverts, you know, we all add something. Yeah, and it's so important that to not, you know, be hidden, and for God to actually flourish through Mm. you. And that's what we want to make this community. That's what we want to make this ministry to ensure that, you know, the women are doing, are coming together as one and as they are. Yeah. And so healings can flourish from that. You know, we can have revelations and the promises of God will come to fruition. And I think we're never meant to live isolated or alone um, or to be identified by the roles that we play but to be actually identified as his daughters um, and to know what he says about us, but also that we would just, you know, connect together. It would not just be about events, but it would be about seeking God and building community um, and being able to build God's kingdom. That's right. And that's something that we spoke about early on. There's a great temptation to think let's get the best speaker, Mm. you know, we can afford by budget and all of these different things, but we, the heart behind it is actually never that 
We just, no. we, we put it on for the women and for the women to encounter God and each other and we're led by him yeah. and the spirit when we make decisions as opposed to making decisions for crowd building mm. um, and for ministry building for the sake of, you know, gathering a crowd of women. The heart behind it is really community um, and at its purest is that connection and intimacy with God yeah. as well. And I think when we make that our focus... God's just blessed all of our mm. plans. Like we just find favour in it and there's just a real calmness in working with you. I've loved working with you. I think we've got Thanks. just great um, synergy as a team. Mm. So, yeah, I watch this space. Uh, this year's going to be exciting. We've got five podcasts. Yes, which yes. will be amazing. So we've got some really amazing women yeah. um, coming on board to help with those podcasts. I think it's going to be phenomenal. And I think, as you said earlier, Lou, like we wouldn't have planned this no. to happen and yeah. God's really just brought it to life. And I think, you know, it's not just going to be something that people – watch on screen but I think what God's been revealing to me of late is that what we do now is generational yeah it's not just going to impact here and now but it's you know the beauty of things being online is that it's kept for years to come yeah that's and it's right. going to have generational impact and it's it's we're building something for the future as well yeah, and I think that's, that's right. so important and I even just encourage the women now that community doesn't stop now that we're in COVID and we do have restrictions being lifted at mm. the moment. I think it'd be amazing to just meet, cut, bring people to your house, bring women to your house, meet together if you feel yeah. comfortable because community shouldn't stop. And I think it will be so important that whilst it looks different, but if we can still build relationships, build those connections, um, that God's really going to move through yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up this morning and, well, it could be any time that you're watching it. Could really. be night time. Who could knows? be night time. Could be in your car. You may not even see us now. Not whilst you're driving. Or me though. doing this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're excited. Enjoy the garden and yes. the podcast. And thank you so much, Emma, for everything that you do and will do. You're amazing. Thanks for having me. Inspirational. <laughs> Ciao. Yeah.